talking about madness, your kids like to have fun with clothes and dress up and play. They'll put shoes on and they'll clippity-clop and they'll put bags over and they'll play mini adults. But that rubs you up the wrong way, doesn't it, Richie? Good boy. Oh, I want to dress up in girls' clothes. Because what? Because you're scared he's going to grow up as a transvestite? Because you think he's going to grow up? And, and, and <laughs> he wants to put stuff on. It's dress up. That's all it is. It's dress up. So, better take a look and see who we've got this week. From Staten Island, the Banjani family. Hi, we're the Banjani family. I'm Lisa. I'm Rich. We have three children. Cameron and Zoe, who are twins that are five years old, and Blake, who is three. <laughs> Blake is very angry. He just doesn't understand no. Ow. You can kick and scream all you want, it's not gonna work. Blake loves to play with girls' clothes. Leave it down, that's for girls. It, it bothers me. Richie a lot. But I, I'd rather him play with a, a truck, Blake. This is always stuff. What am I supposed to do, yell at him because he likes to play with what he likes to play with? But you do. Know. Zoe is an angel, but when she doesn't get her way... You just don't take stuff all day long. Yeah, give me that, please. She is the total opposite. First, come on. <gasps> we are also growing a family cookie business. We stopped making the milk chocolate with the sprinkles. <laughs> so I'm checking my emails. You know, fulfill orders. Guy. And they're just fighting. Blake and Cameron fight like they're two men in a bar fight. Richie's very passive with everything. Oh. Lisa's answer is no to everything. No, you cannot have a toy. No more. So get up so they don't do that to you. No. Some things have to be yes. Look at mum and dad. They're not working together at all. She says black, he says white. Yeah. I feel like if we don't gain control now, <laughs> then what's going to happen in five years from now? That's That actually scares me. Don't even think about it. To have a successful business, you gotta make sacrifices, but not at the expense of your kids. We're, we're totally at a loss. What to do? We don't know what to go next. Why are you kidding? Super, Super nanny. nanny, come to our house. We need you to rescue our family. Looks like this family have called for me just in time. I'm on my way. Oh, who's here, Cameron? Hello, Hi. pleased to meet you. I'm Joe. I'm Richie. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good morning. When the doorbell rang and Joe stepped into my house, I said, OK, what is she going to do first? Hi, Hi pleased to meet you, Lisa. Meet you. I was a little uh, nervous. So this is your brood? Yes. All of them. So what I will do is start off by really just watching you guys today and just seeing what you normally do in your daily routine so that I can get a good idea of what needs to be yeah. tackled first. Mum has been given an opportunity to start a new business, so I really was excited and wanted to see her actually make these cookies. Ah, so this is the famous business. Yes. This is what keeps you busy. So you're baking here, you're actually cooking Everything from here. Done, this is your factory Everything. as such. Okay. When you're at home, how, how do you juggle the kids and the work? I, I, it's, that's what I can't handle anymore, I don't know. I'm definitely losing control of my family life now that I have so much work. There's over 20 million home-based businesses and it has become increasingly more challenging for parents to run a business and balance home life. At the moment, Mum's either busy baking cookies, packaging, answering emails, answering the phone. Hello. Lucky for Mum, Dad's home a couple of days a week to help out as much as he can with the cookie business. But most of the time, she's alone. And with three small children, no wonder it's overwhelming. You did a great job. Oh. Just erase this on the bottom. 
<laughs> you got a lot going on. You've got a lot going on. It's gotten really bad. You know, I'm losing control. My children are running the household. Give it to me. Get. No, get, him, get out of here. Get. No, you forget it. You're not giving it to him. You lost your chance. Stop. Now. I don't think so. Bite me again like that, and you're getting soapy. On the back. Stop. Stop it. Yeah, you just bit me very hard, Joe. You made me bleed. Blake. What's this? This is an guy. everyday occurrence. And he kept trying to bite me as he bit me once. The business has just taken over family life. Blake is doing everything he possibly can to get his mom's attention. No, you can't spill it, Blake! Put them back in. You can't play. Come on. Come on. Come here. Look at <laughs> Blake, don't bite. Blake is a terror. <laughs> he bites. He hits. He's out of control. That's it. Blake, I'm putting you upstairs. Come on. <laughs> That's it. Stay in here. Don't bite, Blake. Blake, go back in your bed. Blake, you're not going down until you learn to behave. Why are you yelling? Tell me what you did wrong and then maybe we could go downstairs. That's it. Goodbye. I see a little boy who is consoling himself and needs his mother's time and needs to have a relationship with her. Seems like business has taken over everything. Later on, whilst mum was doing business, Blake was nowhere to be found. So I went upstairs to see if I could find him. Blake! Not out. Go oh, put that away, Blake. Daddy's gonna be so sad. Why would Daddy be cross? Richie gets very upset when he plays with Zoe's dolls and bags because Why? he used to dress up. He wants him to play with boy, you know, boy toys instead of girl toys. It just it really bothers him. It, it's not a problem for me so much. Blake likes to play with his older sister. He dresses up just like she dresses up. However, he likes to dress up in his little clippity-cloppity shoes and have his handbag over his shoulder. And Dad's horrified by that. He, he's just so scared that his son is going to grow up wearing dresses. I, I, I don't know too many fathers out there that would say, you know, yeah, OK, I would love my son to, you know, play with dresses rather than play with the tool bench, trucks, or whatever it may be. It's really, really common to worry about that. But Richard needs to realise it's just kids playing. I mean, you know, they're having fun just dressing up in, in big people's clothes. Later on, whilst Mum was running the business, it was left up to Dad to give the kids snacks. And it was certainly clear they weren't just hungry for food, but they were hungry for attention too. You're not having candy. There is none. You're not having candy. Forget about it. I'll give you one piece. Two pieces. Well, snack time in my house is all day long. Constantly they go into cabinets. They take out snacks and drinks and they want to go in the refrigerator and they want to eat all day. No, we're not having that again. Yes. There's no more. Yes. There's no more. <laughs> They're driving me crazy right now. <laughs> Cam, what part did you understand? Come on, everybody inside. Now no one's getting nothing. No. Close the refrigerator. Put it back. And you're not getting anything if you speak to me that way. No. We'll start over. Cameron and Zoe, when they misbehave, they have total meltdowns and they start to scream and they stamp their feet. And it really, in a way, is like watching a two-year-old. So we're not eating mashed potatoes now. No, we're not having mashed potatoes. Is that enough? What's that? Mashed potatoes. Oh. First dad says no mashed potatoes. Then he's scooping out a whole mountain of mashed potatoes. I mean, nice dad, nice message. These kids know that if they cry long enough, they'll get what they want. I want two pieces. Two pieces of what? Building. Okay. After watching Dad clearly give the kids what they wanted, it was obvious to me that I needed to get Mum and Dad on the same page so we could sort out discipline. 
first thing that I really want to establish with the pair of you is the juggling. The business and the family. There's no structure that allows the pair of you together to say, right, this is business time and now this is family time. You've got to have some boundaries because you do have three little ones that need you. They're looking for the security and the stability in the repetition that happens during the day. They have no stability because we're always all over the place. They're darting around all the time. Mm -hmm. But they don't know whether they're coming or going. The second thing that I do want to talk to you both about is your relationship together as business partners and as parents. There's no clear communication between the pair of you and how you run the business. And what that does is it trickles into the family. Mm -hmm. As parents, you don't compromise. Right. I'm, I'm very strict. I'm, I'm the no person. And the way that you both behave, which is so differently, I mean, it's like watching a movie for these kids. I mean, you know, which picture house are we going to go into? Oh, she, you know, should we go and see the horror movie or should we go and see Disneyland? <laughs> it's given them mixed messages. You can either be the parent that your kids remember when they grow up as the one that was in there doing it with them. You know, the one that had their arms wrapped around them because they were holding on to the fishing rod as well. Or you're the parent that just always sat at the side. I want to be there. I want to be in there. What do you feel about Richie? I feel that you are just too easy going with them and allow them to do whatever they want. And there's no rules with you, even if I have the rules. I don't have a problem with rules. I just have a problem with what you, you know, they're your rules. They're not our rules. Right, okay. And so we well, have to establish those rules. Not okay. you establish and I have to abide by them like as if you have four children. I think it's important, Richie, for you to be able to to make sure that you're not demasculated here. And I mean you know, that in a right. way that allows you both to feel like you can have your, your place and your role and not feel like you're wearing the trousers all the time right. and not feeling like you're being stripped of anything that you want to do equally in your own home with your kids. This all leads to my next point, which is how the children behave. Behaviour is shocking in the house. We see with Blake punching, Fighting. And when he does that, he's picked up and yelled at, but still, you've got him there. You're still holding him and pacifying him. And yeah. what that leads to is a regression. I look at Blake and I'm like, he's three years old. And actually, when he's with the pair of you, it's like he's a baby. He talks like a baby. He's, I'm on now, now. He talks like that. All the while, while that's happening, who do you think's having a meltdown if things don't go their way? Cameron and Zoe. Oh yeah, because at this stage, what they're not getting is the emotional input that they need from their parents. They're being starved of that emotional input because everything is going into the business, everything. But what are they getting? What are they drawing back? Nothing. And then we get to the next bit. I'm bored, so what am I going to do? Oh, snack. I want a cookie. I want this. I want that. But then what happens when you then want to go to a restaurant and you want to sit down and you want to have a meal? They're not hungry. They're over it eating all day. What you're losing out there, again, is the time we sit down as a family. Madness. Talking about madness, your kids like to have fun with clothes and dress up and play. They'll put shoes on and they'll clippity-clop and they'll put bags over and they'll play mini adults. But that rubs you up the wrong way, doesn't it, Richie? Good boy. Well, I don't want to <laughs> dress up in girls' clothes. Because what? Because you're scared he's going to grow up as a transvestite? Because you think he's going to grow up and... and, and <laughs> he wants to put stuff on. It's dress up. That's all it is. It's dress up. OK? Come on, we've got to get a grip there. OK. So there are a lot of points here that have been made at the table with regards to what we need to work on. You have a, a, a wonderful future ahead with regards to where you can be with your family but you need to put in the groundwork now. You've already shown me your commitment to your cookie company, so now I want to see it with your family. Okay. You will. All right, so let's, let's get on with it, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, no, okay. no rest for the wicked, let's go. Okay. okay. <laughs> like a lot of families, the Banjani family seek to find the balance between running a business and home life but I feel they need to realise what happens when they just put too much on their plate. So I came up with a visual way of being able to show them what's really at stake. Mummy and Daddy have a very special act 
to show us, okay? Yeah. It's the juggling <laughs> act. So what we're going to start off with is kids. Mum, start juggling the ball. Oh, look, what have we got here? We've got family time. Where are you going? Let's put it in. Keep juggling. <laughs> Cookies, Mum, oh, this one's yours. Woo, where'd it go? Keep juggling. Fast, fast, fast. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, what have we dropped here? Oh, look, what's this, kids? What's dropped here? Family time. Oh, that has been dropped, hasn't it? Being a parent, working, it's, you know, hard juggling all of it at one time. This juggling act was a disaster. They didn't do very well, did they? No. No. But we want you focused on your priority, and your priority right now is your cookie business and your family. All right, and that's what we're going to move on next, okay? But I think we all strive to find balance in one way or another. And this family are striving to find balance between the new company that they've started at home and their family life. Here is what you see, the cookie routine. In order to bring more balance into the Bajani household, I'm going to give them a cookie routine that will make sure that they spend time running the business, but equally time with their family. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to represent your three children. They want you to. Right. Spend seven days is just too much. Seven days is just too much. Okay. Your children want you to. So then I guess we'll have to work okay. it in where we only do the weekends and then maybe we could split those days and then we'll have more time with the children. When Joe suggested to balance out our lives, make everything equal, the cookie business to children, she was 100% right, and my children will get a really nice benefit out of the cookie routine because they now have more time with mommy and daddy. I'd like to say well done to the pair of you because this is probably one of the most challenging schedules that I've done working with a family in the four years that I've been here in America helping families. The cookie routine I'm very committed to is going to make life a lot easier. After posting up a routine that allowed the children to have two extra days with their parents a week, it was now on to the next issue. Some families have businesses where they can close the door on their office. In this case, the Bajanis work from their kitchen and the kids are constantly in there causing havoc. So that's why I invented baking time. We do want to create some space so that there is a divide between when you're doing your cookies and you've not got the interference of the kids and we're setting up a boundary, all right? What we can do is put down a little bit of tape mm -hmm. so that it visually reinforces that. Okay. So we've got some scissors. Baking time is a great idea because we put up this piece of tape and there's also a sign that will tell them, you know, Cameron, Zoe and Blake, please stay out. And when we, we explain they really caught on quickly. When I'm baking and I'm putting the cookies in their boxes, you guys can't come in here. This is gonna be our line so that you know, oh, mommy and daddy are working. Okay, so then when mommy's making cookies in here, where are you going to stay? Very in the good. Basement. The kids spend a lot of time arguing about what they want to eat that's in the cupboards. So that's why I came up with a snack box technique. These boxes are for you to decorate. What we are going to do afterwards when they're dry is we're going to choose two snacks and a piece of fruit to put into our snack box so that every day when it's snack time, we take it out of our own box. When Joe first came in, I wasn't sure what she was doing. When she pulled out the boxes and she told us what they were, it was it's a great idea. So help yourselves then. Okay, you take a look at the paints. This a little, so you Are these washable paints? <laughs> yes, they were washable paints. No, 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 Cameron, Cameron. It's not oh, no more, Blake. Blake, I'm sorry. The kids started to paint their snack boxes, and as the fingers got all messy, Mum's face started to cringe. Wait, Zoe. Okay, okay, careful. Okay, 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 okay. When they started painting, Blake took the paint and he was putting globs of paint. I'm like, all right, enough. You're having a panic attack here, aren't you? You're like, oh my God, when is it going to be finished? I have to admit, I never do this with them because I, I just, I can't stand it. I can't stand a mess. I can't stand when it gets in their nails. Mum's hands-on when it comes to making cookies, but when it comes to being hands-on with the kids, she doesn't like these to get messy. Oh, Cameron, I love your blue box. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what I think we should do is come and choose the snacks that you're going to put in them. 
the children, they're given a lot of sweet things and cookie and candy and of course that's going to spike children's blood sugar levels. So now they get one piece of fruit and two other snacks a day. Cheers to apple. What, what have you chose? Apple and bar and cracker. Okay. The snack box will help mum and dad really eliminate the constant battling over snack time. You're going to put your snacks into your snack boxes and then mummy and daddy are going to tell you when snack time is so you can lift up your box and then eat one of the snacks that are in there, okay? So I think give yourself a clap. Well done. Wow, you all did really, really well. Mum and dad have made progress but they still are not working as a team. So I've come up with an exercise that's going to leave them no other choice. So what I'd like to do now is to give you my next technique. Now it's not a magic show, but what I'm gonna do is join you at the hip here. I'm sure there's a <laughs> jean, a jean hoop somewhere. I thought I'd just tie them together, literally by the hip, and suggest to them that they place their hands in each other's back pockets and really go about their daily chores. I think what we could do is um, let's pack some cookies and uh, let's get some cookie work done. <laughs> yeah. Everything about the activity was really difficult because we had one hand each and I'm a righty and I had to use my left. So he had to be my right hand, you know? That's it, perfect. But it actually felt good. We were close, we were having a good time together. We were laughing, working and laughing. Duh, cheating. It's obvious we could work together, I mean communicating a little bit better and both know that, you know, we're on the same page. You can take your hands out your back pockets and you can untie yourselves together. I kind of like it like <laughs> You're doing good. <laughs> Mum and Dad working together is one thing, but in order to change the dynamics in this household, it's going to be a different story to see if they can work together when it comes to discipline. When the kids are doing something that you know is breaking a rule, bring them straight to one of the cubes and explain why you've put them on here. It's one minute per age of the child, and I want you to work together doing that. Okay. As soon as I finished explaining the technique, Blake started to play up. Okay, Blake. And surprisingly enough, he sat on that cube and he did his discipline. It was Zoe who surprised everyone because she took a swing at her brother. Mmm, mummy's little angel. <laughs> so, because you didn't apologize to your brother and you didn't listen to daddy, you're going in a timeout. You have to sit on it for five minutes. Dad? She's your daughter. She's disrespecting you. Put her back on there. Okay? Before, we would always give in to get her to stop crying. And this is the reason why we're in this mess. When you put her down, move away. Every time she gets off, you're going to put her back. <laughs> Zoe wasn't going down without a fight. And mum and dad were being tested. It was either going to make them or break them. They were either going to work as a team, or little Zoe was going to drive them apart. She tried everything. To, to get us to break. I did it! I did it! Let me see. Where are you bleeding? You're not bleeding. Come on. I did it! Do not let her get a drink. Do not let her get anything to eat. She can change this by doing as she's told. I'm bleeding. I'm tired. I'm thirsty. She really pulled every string. Mum really started to feel a little bit sad. You feel sad because you're disciplining your child, because you're teaching her what's right or wrong. You know what? She's learning the hard way, but so are you guys learning the hard way as well. Place her straight back on that cube because she's moved away from it. Do you want her to realise you've got rules? And she needs to do as she's told. <laughs> believe that either Lisa or Richie have ever seen Zoe behave like this because they give in to let Zoe have what she wants. Before when she's done this you've just given in and gone oh let her get on with it. Mm -hmm. So tonight she needs you not to give up on her. She needs rules, she needs boundaries, so she's counting on you. Joe pretty much said are you ready to give up and, and, and I guess she was trying to see how far I was willing to go. 
I mean, you have to stick to your guns as much as it hurts. Leah, I really don't know where she went. Let's go. No. She wanted her way. She wanted to show me that she was not going in that timeout. It was either her breaking or myself and Lisa breaking. Zoe's refusal to do punishment was a long struggle. In fact, three and a half hours. But mum and dad stuck together and prevailed. So do you know the reason why we put you on there? We put you on there. We because, put you on the queue. Because you hit Blake, Blake and you wouldn't say sorry. Apologize to mommy and dad. Are you yeah. sorry to mommy? Okay, give me a hug. Richie and I worked as a team and it felt great. We supported one another. Give daddy a hug, come here, I want to give you a hug. Obviously, we see that it works, and this is something that has to be done. And Lisa and I are both on the same page with it. With mum and dad feeling more comfortable about doing discipline together, it was now time to deal with dad feeling uncomfortable with Blake dressing up in girls' clothes. Jim, what is this for, Jim? <gasps> what's that? I don't know, what's in there? Do I want Blake to play with baby dolls? Do I want her to dress up in a dress? No. <gasps> what have we got here? <laughs> You're a bumblebee? Seriously? No, no seriously, it's just what it is. It's just been fun. It's just been silly. A rock star. Rock star? It do look like a rock star, actually. You need a guitar. If Blake sees Dad dressing up and having fun, then he'll realise that it's OK to do, so that he doesn't feel ashamed and have to go into the closet to do that. I like to play with You know, the principle of all of this is we don't we want not Blake feeling like he's got to hide in a closet because he decides he wants to play with something that's really, you know, stereotypically what female or male just you know, for kids it's just about play and dress up. Okay, you know what? I'll ease it off on it a little bit. I don't want him have to hide to play with something. I'd rather him do it in front of me and know that he could do it in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I'm going. <gasps> Jojo's going for a few days. You know, Lisa and Richie know what hard work is. So that same energy that they've been putting into expanding their cookie business, I now want to see spent on their own family. Please work on balance. I can't emphasize this anymore. It is all about balance. Zoe will definitely test us while Joe's away. I want to make sure everything stays on track in sync the pair of you. If it means you've got to go back to putting your hands in your pockets, do it. Do we want to see her go, I mean, and, and have to do this on our own? No, but it's something that we need to do. It's our family and they're going to try to stick to it. Bye-bye. Both Lisa and Richie, you know, are smart people. They know what they need to do. Now the techniques are in the house. What are they going to do? It's been four days since I've seen Lisa and Richie, and I'm excited to see exactly what's been going on whilst I've not been there. How are you both? Good. Good. So, are we feeling good about watching this DVD? So, so. Oh, you both went like this. It's a bit telling. Well, we have a lot of questions for you, so. Let's take a look at it then. I put the tape down. And I'm putting the sign up. What does the sign say? Ten buttons only keep out. Excellent. <laughs> hey guys, the sign's coming. Woo! Down. That went really, really well. You were able to bake your cookies and, and get the business done. The kids took really well to it. What we're going to look at now is Blake's dress up here. Hi guys. You're gonna pack them. Oh, I love him. Look with his little bag over his shoulder. In Spanish, you wrote. Dad, that was really sweet. <laughs> just sweet that you're just you know in there involved with the kids and you're just hanging out with them. And did not feel that. It just seemed really. Yeah, no, he's comfortable. He you know, just he feels seemed... like he can do whatever he wants. You have a tart in here. You want that or a rice cake? 
time. We could save this one for later because we never put the rice cake in there. Go sit. Whoopsie. Well, Daddy's bringing home dinner now. You want a piece of chicken that Mommy made last night? I'm a big A bit? Should Mommy take one too? Hi! How was it? Good. Yeah? Blake, where are you? It's dinner time. Sit with us. Okay, this is... Ready, Blake? If you're nodding your seat, then it's a warning. Sit down if you're having one more bite. Okay, that's it. You said that you were done? That's it. Okay. Let's look at what you're doing here, all right? Because this is all messed up. Okay. It really is messed up. The snack box was given to the children so that it would visually be a representation of how many snacks they have during the day. You can't even use the box as reference and then your old behavior habits kick in because they go straight to the cupboard and then we go into the fridge and we eat 10 minutes before pizza. This is what you do every time you make the choice, the pair of you, to slack. Okay. Because really, it's about discipline. I don't like them playing with paints, play, uh, clay, anything messy like this. Why don't we like them playing with clay? And... Because the clay is not easy to clean up. Right. So it gets stuck in the floor. It gets over. That's why I chose to play outside. <laughs> if you look at Cameron's shirt, it's all over his shirt. And, and clay doesn't really come out very easily. So it's just a mess. I know, it's a, it's a little bit, but it doesn't matter because... That speck! Yeah, but when it gets hard and sticky, it doesn't come out. Um, I can tell you for a fact. It does come out, Lisa, seriously. Okay. It comes out, but... Why don't you sit down and do it? Oh. See, this is the mess we don't like. We need to really work on this. Okay. You know, kids do get dirty fingernails. You know, we get a nail brush and we scrub them in the bath. Okay. You know? Rich, don't start counting because she's pushing it away. Okay. Blake, Blake, you have to go away. Zoe's in a timeout. Blake! You don't <laughs> hit your brother. <laughs> you don't hit anyone. <laughs> I should have said it once. Again. You're just feeding into it. <laughs> You don't touch your mommy. That's it. Lisa, don't even talk to her. Don't? It doesn't matter where she stands if she's going to act that way. So she can stand there all night long. <laughs> Reg? What? Now I'm starting. OK. So what I'm not seeing is consistency. I'm not seeing enough following this, the technique step by step that you're tweaking it and you're improvising it based on your emotions. When you do every step and you're consistent with it, the results are fast. So what I do want to do today with you both is to work on the techniques that do need tweaking okay. and get you back on track. Okay, great. Okay. Go with it. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Mum and Dad have been happy to improvise the naughty technique. And when they do it, it doesn't get done properly. So I had Dad pretend like he was one of the kids and Mum as well. When you get put on the cube, I want you to behave like your kids do. Okay. So I began with testing Dad's skills on the naughty cube. And you, you go on, and you and Sorry, sorry, she's gone. Yeah, but she's done really well with the naughty discipline. He's become a little bit complacent with the way that he walks kind of slops back and forth. So what do you do if you've got two? How? Show me. And how do you do that? You then how do you do that? <laughs> Keep going. If he can just remain strong until the end and make sure that he gets an apology before he's begging for those hugs and kisses, he'll be fine. And what happens if when you're on the cube and you're in charge, mm -hmm. your child decides that they're going to pick up the cube and throw it, then what? I don't even pay attention. Really? Then keep going, because now I want to see exactly what you are going to do. You're on it. And again, walk like you mean it. OK, 
Hey, Mum, where are you going wrong? Oh, because he's sitting, but the cube's not near him. Correct. When he pushed it away, OK, if you brought it here, you are to place him on the oh, cube. OK? okay? Because okay. that's you then taking control of it. These techniques I will use every day. I know I'm not 100% at them right now, but believe me, in the months to come, I will be great at it. You've come a long way, let's face it, from three and a half hours. But they're still testing it every day. And the more you can become aware of that yourselves, the more you realise that you'll nail it, you'll have it underneath your belt, and you'll get that result. At the end of the day, they have the techniques, both parents. They know what they're supposed to be doing, and they know when they do it correctly, they get the results, and their family are better off for it. After the lesson with the Naughty Cube, I had one more issue to address, and that was getting Mum feeling comfortable about getting her hands messy and having fun. Wow! <laughs> In order to get Mum really involved and a little bit messy, I had her paint flower pots with the children and then plant pretty flowers afterwards. And it was challenging for her. You could see mentally she was having to overcome. We put the paint in the flower pot. Oh, he put the paint in the flower pot. And I was like, oh my God. Oh no, you know what? It's leaking out. What's up there? Is there a hole in it? Oh yeah, there's a hole in it. That's why there's a hole. <laughs> and I really played up to the situation. Oh, it is leaking. <laughs> And I kind of just like sucked it back, like, okay, this is time for them to play, be free, okay. We're gonna put the flowers in here. We don't put the paint inside here. So look where I put mine. Here's your. Oh, very good, Cameron. It's on my arm. It's okay. It's look, okay. I got it all over my arm. It's okay. And as mum started to loosen up, the kids did as well. Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> you could really see this energy amongst the family feeling rather relaxed and calm where they were just genuinely having fun. Now what do you do? Just stick it in? The whole scene was a mess, but it was fun. Look at that. So look, you see the difference? Do you feel the difference? I mean, yeah, yeah, so step outside the box a bit. When mum was engaged, when she was focusing purely on having fun with the kids, you could sense it, the kids could feel it, and everyone was having fun. Magic. Jojo's going home now. Joe put us right on the right track. Now we have to continue on this path and make it work. Blake, love the bag. We appreciate everything she did for us. It just goes to show that, you know, with, with, a, with a little discipline and a little sugar too, you, you get what you want. Zoe, Jojo, give you a hug and kiss my boy darling. Thank you. Joe taught my family. I'm gonna miss Georgia. I definitely feel that I've been able to give the family good balance between the time they'll spend with their business and also the time that they'll spend with their kids as well. Take care, mate. Thank you, Joe. Take care, you're welcome. Take care. Thank you. I just hope that they continue to use the techniques and put that in place with their own family. Bye, Blake. So every day they wake up and not only are they proud of what they do for a business, but also proud of what they've achieved as a family. Mark, get set, go! I notice a big difference in my family. Going forward, I think that we're gonna have a much happier family. Oh, Karen is gonna get a sigh of the week at a time! Hooray! You won! I've seen a lot of changes in my family. The way that I found the balance between our business and our family is because Richie and I are on the same page. We work together. Maybe they caught fish Hi. on there. Hi, speed boat. Hi, speed boat. The biggest lesson is that my kids could get messy with me, but they definitely cannot mess with me. You want to walk in the sand? It just shows that, you know, once you put rules into place and, and you teach them the rules, how fast things can turn around. Gotcha. <laughs> Did it. Right. They're only five and three, and you want to have a good relationship when they're 10, 12, and, and older and it's just going to help all the way through our whole life. Say wave goodbye wave to Jojo. Wave goodbye to Jojo. Bye, Bye Joe.